Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and in front of us is a multi-pick plug spinner called the Flip It. Um, you also might know it's a core spinner. Either way, this is what this one looks like. And this review copy was sent to me by Multipick, so thank you Multipick for sending this my way so I could do a review. I really appreciate it. Right. I mean, just look at this. First off, I mean, you've got to say that whilst there may be cheaper uh, plug spinners out there, there probably aren't many that look quite as amazing as this one. I mean, uh, I know that Multipick do like to put themselves out there as a premium locksmith or lock picking brand um, but sometimes they really outdo themselves with their design I think this is just one of those occasions where um, the design just makes what by and large is a relatively simple mechanism just so much more desirable wow really really cool yeah I mean it appeals to me anyway so what do you do with one of these for those of you who don't know what a, a plug spinner is how do we even use one one of the most common uses of a plug spinner is, is this scenario. So you're a professional locksmith, you've come to a door that needs a non-destructive entry, and because of the way, say, a door frame was positioned like this, you can't easily tension it from the side that you want to, so you've had to tension it away from the door frame, and you've picked the lock in an anti-clockwise manner like this. So you put tension on, you picked it anti-clockwise using your preferred tension method, and you pick the lock anti-clockwise. Why is that a problem? Well, most locks, of course, open when they're picked clockwise. If you were then to turn this clockwise, it would re-lock back up. So this is where a plug spinner like this actually comes into its own. The way in which one of these plug spinners works is actually very simple and very elegant. All it does is it has a tip here which will turn roughly 180 degrees at a button push and it'll do that really really rapidly let's just have a look at how this one works you have a little indicator there which will indicate whether it's going to turn to the right or to the left and that'll be depending on how you charge it you also have a little pin in there and that engages with a little pin hole in this aluminium which you can see either side of that marker when you push this button it it actually separates these two parts pushing the top part out of the pin and that will cause it to rapidly flip in the direction you chose let me just demonstrate it uh, dry so we would choose a side and it, it is actually uh, surprisingly firm this one so I'm going to have it so that it's flipping to the right here. There's your tip, and you'll see how rapid it is when I press this in. There you go. It's that fast. Why does it have to be fast? Well, what we're trying to do is move the key pins, which are on this side, to this side, past the driver pins and the holes in the Bible, so rapidly that they don't fall down into the Bible and stop the lock. So what I'll do is I'll put the, I've already set it to go to the right. There you go. I'm going to pop this centrally inside the lock like that and relatively deep. And what I'm going to do is keep it central, very central and just press the button. And you'll see that what it's done is it's moved about 180 degrees clockwise past its locked position. This will then allow you to keep turning that core um, so that you can get the door open. So does that mean that this tool is only to be used by locksmiths? Well, um, no, actually. I've got three different scenarios which I think equally apply to lock sporters and hobbyists as well as locksmiths. So let's have a quick look at those and let's see this in action. So the first scenario I can think of where this would be really useful for lock sporters and hobbyists is where you have a lock that takes a cylinder like a kick cylinder. And these types of locks you can open both ways, at least unlock them in both ways, but the actual shackle won't release unless it's opened, that's right, clockwise. 
So why might you've opened this the wrong way? Well, one, I guess by accident, and two, you might have something like a Medico core in here, which is just a lot easier to open anti-clockwise. Maybe you don't have a key, but then it leaves you with that conundrum again. How do you get it past its locked position to the real opening position to release the shackle on that padlock? Maybe cut a key for your lock if it doesn't have a key. And um, well, that's again where the plug spinner will come in. So I have my padlock, which I have in this scenario found a lot, lot easier to open anti-clockwise, although it will not open the padlock that way. I have charged my flip it on the right hand side. I put this centrally down the center of the lock as close to center as I can support it a little bit and keep it central and just flip this over. Now, hopefully I've moved that past the locked position. And if I apply tension appropriately to the core now, there we go, I can open the pole padlock up. Very, very useful. Another scenario which, oh, and I wish I had a plug spinner before for this. This this one really gets you. If you ever come across a lock with trap pins, so these are extra rosa pins which fire into the keyway and it does actually trap the plug from turning any further. So I've actually picked this and passed the first set of, so I've done this clockwise, first set of three trap pins here. So picked it normally, picked three trap pins and I've rotated all the way around. And what I want to do is just avoid, just, I mean, generally really avoid having to um, re-pick any of these trap pins. They are horrible. So a plug spinner should be able to help me just reset this whole lock back round so I don't have to re-pick any of those horrible, horrible trap pins. Um, the alternative is I have to turn this all the way around, pick another set of trap pins and before it re-locks. And sometimes just one set's enough. <laughs> so I've set this to the left because I want to flip this anti-clockwise past the trap pins on the right hand side and hopefully just lock the lock back up again. And looks like we were successful in doing that. Perfect. And the final scenario I want to look at is just these cross locks. If you manually picked one one position and you turn it, eventually it will fall into the pin chambers on the next side, then the next side, then the next side. And you can actually save yourself a bit of time just by uh, keep flipping it round. And yeah, these uh, plug spinners do, you can see this one's uh, pre-picked. There you go. These plug spinners do actually uh, flip these locks as well. They work just in the same way. Pop the tool centrally and press. And you could see the, the tailpiece just flip over. And again, we have uh, turned it at another position. So there you go. That's just some scenarios by which one of these plug spinners could be really, really useful. And I can see why so many people like to have one of these in their kit, especially if they are a professional locksmith. And, uh, you know, the scenarios which I just chose, and there could be more, are just that there's access issues to tensioning, that a lock is easier to pick one way than another, you want to avoid trap pins, or you have a multi-axis multi-pin lock where you just don't want to keep having to pick it over and over again. So yes, one of these plug spinners can be really, really useful. This Flip It by Multipick, um, well, this will set you back a, a reasonable amount of money. This is um, 65 euros, 75 cents at the time of filming, about 59 pounds, 89 pence, or 77 dollars, 20 or thereabouts. So this isn't super cheap, but if you just look at it, I mean, I think that this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful design. And of course, it's really, really functional. So for me, and I suppose many others, if you combine a beautiful design with um, precision engineering and really, really excellent functionality, I mean, it's a, 
it's definitely worth considering, I'd say. Another just small feature in this particular plug spinner, which I, I really like, is that you have two grub screws at the tip. So should you damage this tip or want to replace it for a smaller one, you can do and you can center it between the two grub screws so it's not either one side or another. Because I think it's really important with these plug spinners to keep the center axis, well, centered. So that is the Multi-Pick Flip It plug spinner. I've actually really enjoyed using it. Um, I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Do you use a plug spinner at all? What do you think to this Multi-Pick version? Just let me know. Really, really interested. And of course, I will see you all next time.